my one page stupid, simple, as easy as possible, 80-20 for your health. These are the things that you have to do. And I talk about them so much because I just know that you watching this right now probably don't have these down pat. You need to get them down as the foundation of your life and your health and your longevity and whether you're gonna maybe get cancer or heart disease later on, whether you're gonna live a long and healthy, prosperous life. This stuff matters. These are the type of things that if you ignore them for 10, 20, 30 years, you're never gonna go back and change them for the most part. Those bad habits are gonna be so ingrained that it's just a matter of time before you get some life-threatening diagnosis or you just kill over dead, I guess. This stuff matters. If you can't connect your daily actions to wanting to live a long life, to things that are happening in 10 or 20 years, you're going to suffer. Okay, enough of the fear-mongering. I know for most people, it really doesn't do anything, but I feel the need to say it. You gotta figure out what your why is. Maybe it's your kids, your grandkids. Maybe you don't wanna be at hospitals. Maybe you don't want surgery. Maybe you don't want drugs. I'm petrified of all those things. And I want to live a long, healthy life. And I want to be around so that if we do end up colonizing the stars and we extend human life indefinitely, I want to be a part of that. Why not? I enjoy living. I want to be here for as long as possible. That's my why. So I'm going to give you four things today that you have to do that you need to focus on. If you're just pursuing a bunch of health content and it's taken away from any of these things or you don't have these figured out, then just stop all of that and invest that time and energy into getting these down. This is going to be probably 95 to 97% of what you need to be healthy long-term. I'm going to try to go into each one of these very quick bullet points. You can do further research on any of these. You can build the plan that you want that works for you. I'm trying to give you the high-level first principles here. So don't consider this all-inclusive. You're going to have to maybe do some research on some of these that are a little fuzzy to you, but that's good because that's going to increase adherence. You're going to understand it. Then you're going to be able to take action. So real food, the most important thing for this is cooking your food at home, not eating out packages, not eating at the Whole Foods salad bar, which is garbage, and not eating at restaurants, no matter how clean you think it is. You're not gonna be perfect with this, so think about it as a slider from one to 10. You wanna be a nine, which is let's say 90% of your meals are eaten at home, cooked from scratch. Restaurants use seed oils. There's lots of other things I'm gonna even get into. They use cheap conventional meat and animals. They support factory farming. They destroy the environment and they destroy human health. Restaurants are not good for you. Restaurants are not good food. Restaurants are bad for you. If you eat at restaurants, it's bad for you. If you're eating at restaurants, it's not good for you. If you eat at restaurants, your life is gonna be shortened. And sometimes you're gonna eat at restaurants, yes. And maybe certain restaurants in other parts of the world where all the ingredients are local, maybe there are some exceptions here. But even the highest end steakhouses in the world that I've been to and that friends and family have been to, they still cook their steaks in like safflower oil or canola oil or whatever. Eat as much of your meals and food at home as possible from clean ingredients that you source yourself and that you keep at home. Some simple ways to do this, to kickstart this, buy avocado oil, organic coconut oil, MCT oil, which you can get at wildfoods.co, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee. Those will cover your cooking oils. That's all you need. Don't buy packaged junk foods or processed foods. The foods at home should ideally have to be prepped or cooked for you to be able to eat them. You don't want to have like bags of chips and other things in the pantry and just go in there and snack and snack and snack. That's the same thing as eating a restaurant. You're eating packaged, corporate created food. When a corporation cooks your food for you and provides it to you in a ready to eat form, it's not good for you. Get a 10 to 12 inch cast iron pan. Learn how to sear ingredients on each side. Preheat your pan always. Learn how to use the oven if it's a thick ingredient and it needs further cooking. That's all it requires. And then use lots and lots and lots of salt. More salt than you probably realize. And your food will taste good. You will look forward to your meals. You'll get better and better every single meal you cook. And restaurants that were enticing when you didn't know how to cook will be a thing of the past. You won't even look at them and be like, oh, that sounds good. You look at them and be like, I can get better food at home. I'm not gonna spend the money. I'm not gonna spend the time. And I'm gonna be doing my health a favor by not going to this restaurant. How is that even a choice? Two salts you need, wild pink salt, and then we have the wild flake salt. You can get over wildfoods.co, use code wildceo for 12% off your entire order. It's all you need. You need cooking oils, your salt, and raw real ingredients. And yes, get some tongs, get a baking sheet with a rack on it, get a spatula, maybe a meat thermometer if you're very nervous about doing steaks and whatnot, and that's all you need. Also get one good nonstick pan. That's for eggs and whatnot. That covers real food. It's very simple. Eat at home from raw real ingredients. Cook and prep your food yourself. Watch cooking channels on YouTube, get recipes, try things, experiment, use lots and lots of salt, more salt than you can even fathom, use it at the beginning, the middle, the end, and then enjoy your meals. And get that to 90 to 95 to maybe even 100% of your meals cooked at home. 
Number two, the big, big, big thing you have to get right is sleep. Eight hours a night, pitch black room, get two to three sound machines. Don't watch Netflix or TV or be on a screen two hours before bed. Instead, do a Kindle or hang out, play a board game, low lights, control your lights, turn off those bright overhead fluorescent lights in the kitchen or any LEDs. Get some orange bulbs and some red bulbs. I keep those in my bathroom and let your body wind down. Consider taking a shower. Let your body cool down and get clean. That'll help you sleep and try to go to bed at the same time every night. Once your body gets into that habit and that routine, waking up at the same time every night, you'll be consistent. It'll be easy and your body will naturally fall asleep. I would say the biggest thing that I've done is the F.Lux app, night shift on my phone, controlling my light in my environment, low light, and then reading Kindle at night versus being on like an iPad or watching Netflix and just really not watching Netflix as much has been a game changer for my sleep. I used to go to bed late. I was a night owl. I played poker for years and that took a long time to break that. Having kids helped, of course. It was really the Netflix, the blue light and just less light one to two hours before bed. That was the real game changer. Now, if I want to stay up, it's hard. Even if I'm on my computer, it's hard for me to stay up. The blue light in the screens is huge for your pre-bed ritual. And then avoid caffeine eight hours before bed. That usually helps. Number three. All right, we got real food cooking at home. We got sleep, make it a priority. And then we got get outside, get moving, ideally in sunlight, 30 minutes a day, minimum an hour is even better. Don't complicate this. You can garden, you can take a walk, you can hang out and run around with your kids, you can climb a tree, you can take some dumbbells, you can wear a weighted vest, you can just take a walk and listen to an audiobook or just walk in nature. Don't complicate this. Every single day, if you have to set a timer on your phone, get outside 30 minutes to an hour. It feels like you're not being productive. It feels like you're going slow or whatever, but that's the freaking point. You want more of that. It's a break for your mind, but more importantly, it's a break for your body and it gets your body moving. So schedule it into your day. You'll start looking forward to it. Get outside with no sunglasses on. Let the sun shine on your body. Get that vitamin D. Detach, turn your phone off. Look around, look far, get your face out of your screen. And the more you do this, the better. It's crazy that I even have to tell people this. Your biology believes it's going to be born in the wild and live in the wild its whole life. Instead, you come into this artificial environment where you can just sit in chairs all day and walk to your car and walk back inside. And that's it. It is insanity that this is like a thing that we have to talk about and that it's actually a health crisis. If you don't have a daily getting outside movement routine, just make it simple. Get outside, get moving 30 minutes to an hour a day. If you don't have that, you have a major gap in your routine. I don't care if you're going to the gym three days a week and lifting heavy or whatever. You need to move every single day. It is part of your human biology. Okay, again, real food cooked at home, sleep, getting outside, moving. And then number four is community, fun, play, and people. We are social animals. We are tribal creatures. We need people. The most torturous thing you can do to a human is lock him or her up in solitary confinement. It's a removal of us from other humans. It is the most damaging, torturous thing you can do. It's always easier to say no because traffic and because this and because I want to do that because I want to be on my screen because I want to play my game. Anytime you can spend time with people or have them come over or do anything to get your face out of a screen and in front of people laughing, playing, having fun, discussing, whatever, the better it's going to be for your health. We have growing depression rates. We have growing isolation in our culture. We have this like, don't trust your neighbor thing. Build my fences, my big house. The separation of our species is creating a massive negative effect on our mindset, mental health, depression's on the rise, suicide's on the rise. And we think we're getting social connection by going on this thing and like texting people or whatever, but we're not. It's not an actual substitute for real human connection. Touch people, hug them, don't be afraid of them, get in real life with them, talk, laugh, et cetera. This is integral for long-term health and well-being. Four things that make up 80 to 90% of your health. Real food at home, cook all your meals. Sleep, make it a priority, get a routine around it, get some tools around it. Movement, get outside, get sunlight, move as much as possible. Community, people, fun, laugh, etc. And the community part is really stress mitigation. I could add another category here, which would be like number five, stress mitigation. But these four are stress mitigation. So if you're doing these as a baseline, you will be eliminating stress. And then if you're still stressed, you can find other strategies, stoicism, meditation, mindfulness, etc. There's a lot of ways to make a stress. There's tons of things that you can try and you really have to try the things that are gonna work for you because everyone's different. And like, I'm not gonna sit in a room, meditate for hours on end, but I do try to be mindful and I meditate in the shower and I do breath meditation in the morning when, I, when I'm driving, things like that. I've kind of found my routine. I'm also low stress in general because I've set up my lifestyle to be that way. 
Four things for your health. Do not neglect them. If you neglect these four things, you are neglecting a very important aspect of your health and there will be long-term repercussions. And if you want to make money and attract a mate and be happy and live an amazing life, all the things that we want in our modern culture that humans desire for, well, these four are the foundation. You're healthier, you're thinking better, you're making better decisions, you're more confident, you're more likely to go out there and get it. It's all connected. Neglect your health and you'll pay a price. You'll pay a price in your finances, your happiness, your long-term health. You'll maybe pay the ultimate price. Don't neglect them.